Embellishing stately mansions in Orlando, Florida, is Diane Dull's calling. For many homeowners, the ceiling is not the focus of attention. But when Diane enters the picture, she shifts the focus upward by creating plaster decorations that rival the icing on a wedding cake. I believe I have my own style, an imaginative style, and a, probably a delicate style. For the past 21 years, this architectural sculptor has been lending old world style to new homes and turning not so humble houses into majestic palaces. Today, Diane is creating a multi-tiered molding for a mansion. The molding will have nine components with a classic egg and dart motif at its center. Every piece of Diane's stunning ornamentation begins with a single lump of clay. This is just an oil-based clay, and all I'm really doing is getting my basic shape here. Uh, the final version will take many steps. Using an Italian pointing tool and baby oil, Diane shapes the porous clay into the beginnings of an egg and dart. Next, Diane places the partially sculpted egg and dart on a model to make sure the proportions are correct. The plaster model represents all of the steps or levels in Diane's molding design. The piece is complex, and Diane will use all the sculpting skills she learned while attending art school in Wisconsin. Diane's fine arts degree prepared her as an artist, but not necessarily for real life. I wanted to be a sculptor. I was going to be a, a famous sculptor in New York, and I uh, found out that it was not a lot of fun to starve to death. Diane left her small town in Wisconsin and found work in an ornamental plaster studio in Milwaukee. There was an old Italian master there. I learned everything the old way, and we're still doing it the old-fashioned way because it works. Because the clay is soft, Diane can shape it only so far. She will need to make a harder plaster casting to continue perfecting the egg and dart. The first step in the process is to make a latex impression of the clay model. The frame or gate around the egg and dart will keep the latex from spilling over. She's careful to pour it in a slow, steady stream. Well, the slower you pour it, the slower it's going to creep up onto the piece itself. That'll mean that there are fewer and fewer surface bubbles. And that's very important if you want the surface to be real smooth and clean. It will take 18 hours for the latex to cure or solidify. When we come back, the process may look like child's play, but the result is definitely sophisticated when Modern Masters returns. Diane Dull's personal motto is, dare to be dull, but her ornamental plaster is anything but. This Orlando, Florida artist prepares a plaster mix that she will pour into the latex mold she's made. Diane approaches even this routine step as an art. Part of the art in mixing plaster is knowing how much water to how much plaster there is to use. When the plaster reaches the right consistency, Diane carefully spoons it into the latex, a process she can really put a finger on or in. And now I'm going to force all of the air out by touching every part of the surface. So I'm trying to do everything I can to keep from having too many air holes in there. Unlike the latex, it only takes the plaster a few minutes to dry. We're going to try to take it out as carefully as we can here. And then this is our positive piece. The hardened plaster allows Diane to refine the egg and dart with the pointing tools and sandpaper. She will continue the process of refining and making new molds 
until the piece is perfect. Well, I have an idea in my mind what I think perfection is. So when it gets to that point, I stop because I know if I go beyond what I think perfection is, I'm just going to ruin it. So sometimes you have to say that's it and we're done. Once the egg and dart are sculpted, Diane will cast another mold out of durable urethane. With the urethane, Diane can cast up to 40 pieces from one mold. Diane will need hundreds of the eggs and darts to complete over 100 linear feet of molding she'll need for her client's home. Using the stairs of the model, Diane begins constructing her heavenly design. Plaster beadwork, wooden dental pieces, and scrolls add to the elegant motif. From the model, Diane will cast a final mold from silicone. Diane's apprentice, Nicola Fariga, helps prepare a completed silicone mold by spraying away any small debris with an air compressor. Next, he coats the mold with Diane's secret solution to ensure a flawless casting. <laughs> With a clean mold, Diane and Mikola are ready to have a fling. They toss handfuls of plaster into the mold. There are too many holes and curves and things that are up underneath that you can't get at when you just pour it. Also, when you're pouring it, you're pouring air underneath the plaster. So you're trapping air. In this process, air is the enemy. Mikola bounces the mold. Then he and Diane pat the mold to release any trapped air. Pat down. A little bit of sizal adds a lot of strength to the plaster. If the piece is dropped once it's dry, it may break, but it won't shatter, making repairs easier. It will take the plaster a half hour to dry. And when it comes out of its mold, Diane will know what it's like to come close to perfection. It takes so much loving care just to make it perfect. I still am striving for duplicating the, what the masters describe as the ultimate in architectural ornament. I know the perfect one is there. I just think it probably will be 10 or 20 more years before I get to that perfect one. From an earthly lump of clay, Diane Dull creates heavenly decorative accents for the home. In Diane's hands, plaster transcends its weightiness and transforms a room into an airy dream. <laughs>